It's our tradition in April to, have, uh, to celebrate student success, and today we are pleased to have a graduate student research presentation. Megan Hill is currently a fourth year PhD student in the, in the lab of Teheo Kim, based out of the Institute for Quantitative Health Sciences and Engineering. Her research is, uh, is focused on developing new nanoparticle delivery systems that can be used for early diagnosis and treatment of brain cancer. Megan came to our attention after she recently placed first in the MSU three-minute thesis competition, and she's competed at the Midwest Regional three-minute competition in Chicago. Before attending MSU, Megan Hill completed internships with the Los Alamos National Laboratory and the National Center for Genome Resources. That's a pretty diverse uh, background. Uh, in August of 2019, she joined the Biomedical Engineering Department at Michigan State University to pursue her PhD. The College of Engineering at MSU awarded her a dissertation completion fellowship for the spring 2023, and her uh, planned defense date is January 24 with her expected graduation in May of 24. After graduation, she plans to join the pharmaceutical industry in hopes of, de of developing new medical technologies that can be translated into the clinic. Her full bio is in your packet. So please welcome Megan Hill. Thank you for the introduction, Dr. Gage, and thank you to the board for having me here today. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the research that we've been doing on engineered nanoparticles for effective brain cancer detection and treatment. So the type of brain cancer that we're focusing on is known as glioblastoma. It's a very invasive and aggressive form of brain cancer, normally diagnosed within stage four and has a five-year survival rate of less than 7%. Now these cancers tend to form mostly within the frontal and the temporal lobe regions, as we can see here with MRI and PET scans with enhanced contrast of a tumor formed within the temporal lobe region. And this can actually make these tumors very difficult to diagnose and treat. But one of the new things that medical researchers have been looking into is the use of nanoparticles to both help early diagnose and treat these type of cancers. Nanoparticles themselves range in sizes between 1 and 100 nanometers, which to put into perspective is about a thousand times smaller than a single strand of hair. And so the type of nanoparticles that we're focusing on are known as Prussian blue nanoparticles. So they were first developed accidentally in around 1706 when an artist was mixing together two different types of rocks and blood, which we assume came from some sort of animal trying to create a red paint and accidentally end up coming up with a blue pigment instead, which we now know today as Prussian blue. Prussian blue, as we can see here, is, comes as a powder form, but this powder is actually composed of many, many hundreds of millions nanoparticles. And it was actually used to create this painting here off to the left. Um, it's still a commonly used dye and paint to this day, but as of 2003, it was actually FDA approved for heavy metal toxicity removal within the body for thallium and cesium. But these Prussian blue nanoparticles actually have a wide variety of other medical applications, including enhancing MRI contrast, which is our common diagnosis agent for brain cancers, um, enhancing photoacoustic imaging and photothermal therapy applications, um, which is the primary focus of our research. They can be hollowed out to allow for passive loading of common chemotherapeutic drugs for targeted drug delivery purposes. They can also be used to reduce local inflammation of tumors. There we go. So what we're focusing on is applying these Prussian blue nanoparticles for brain cancer. So the primary reason that these type of nanoparticles, or I guess, type of brain cancers are so deadly is what we know as the blood-brain barrier. So the blood-brain barrier is kind of a layer of cells surrounding your brain that prevents a lot of nasty toxins or pathogens from entering in and causing all sorts of havoc while letting in essential nutrients. Well, it also prevents a, common, a lot of common chemotherapeutics, diagnostic agents, or in this case, even Prussian blue nanoparticles from entering your brain and allowing us to diagnose or treat these type of tumors. Well. We have developed a new cloaking mechanism by using U87-derived exosomes, which essentially are glioblastoma-derived 
uh, vesicles that are commonly used for cellular communication within the body. And using mechanical force, we've created hybrid particles that can naturally pass through the blood-brain barrier and into the tumor site, allowing us to not only get early detection, but hopefully localized treatment of the tumor. And so hopefully our overall goal is that by injection of these particles within the body, probably through IV, and then exposure, exposure to a laser within the brain, we can actually not only see early diagnosis, but hopefully local therapeutic effect within the brain utilizing heat. So the first part that we focus on with these particles is that we can see through the development we have exosomes that are naturally hollow structures, Prussian blue nanoparticles that are naturally cubic in shape, that through mechanical force can create these more spherical type particles that through single particle analysis we can see that in red we have a Prussian blue core based on the iron signal and then in green we have a nice exosome layer. And so for our cell-based applications we want to make sure that because these are hybrid particles they contain both the innate properties of an exosome as well as a Prussian blue nanoparticle. So exosomes themselves tend to have fairly high uptake patterns within cells because they are biologically derived. And we can see here that with our fluorescently stained hybrid particles, they have about the same high fluorescently um, intensity as our native exosomes do, indicating we still have that same cellular uptake efficiency. And then on the flip side with our Prussian blue nanoparticles, when they're exposed to laser light, they can cause localized heat within a specific region that can cause localized cell death. And what we can see here is that with our laser, we have no indication of cell death, indicating the laser is causing nothing. But with our particles added into the mixture and then exposed to a laser, we see that we have specific cell death within the exposed region, indicating our particles are not only very good at localized treatment, but when not exposed to a laser are very biocompatible. So, ooh. The uh, exciting part of this presentation is that we're looking into in vivo diagnostics and treatment. So initially using a subcutaneous mouse model, which we can see here, which is essentially where we inject the cells into the flank of a mouse to induce a tumor model, we can see that before treatment we have nice large tumor signal. But after treatment with our particles and laser, we virtually have no tumor signal left, indicating we have really nice localized therapy using our particles. And then on the diagnostic side, we can actually see that as a reminder, when we inject these particles through the tail vein into a mouse, we're hoping that they're going to localize within the tumor region within the brain. And we can see that our particles should naturally be passing through the blood brain barrier and into the tumor site. And we can validate this using photoacoustic imaging, which is also based on that laser application where what we see here in green is our Prussian blue signal localized within the tumor area overlaid with an extreme blood signal, which is very exciting. And then finally for tumor identification, we can see that our particles specifically can target the tumor region <coughs> while not the rest of the brain, which can be very helpful during tumor resection during surgery as it can help identify infiltrating tumor tissue within a healthy brain. And so to wrap up, We've developed a new hybrid particle that contains both innate Prussian blue and exosome properties that, and also has direct targeting of brain tumors as well as local therapeutic effect. And our next steps actually include partnering with Henry Ford Hospital to implement photothermal treatment within the brain. We're hoping to enhance photoacoustic and MRI contrast, um, hopefully for earlier detection and as well as hopefully applying this technology to a wide variety of cancers by just changing the type of exosome that we're using. And with that, I would like to thank everybody a part of my lab, especially my PI, Dr. Teho Kim, for making this research possible, and as well as the Institute for Quantitative Health Science and Engineering here at Michigan State um, with all of the nice lab resources that we've been allowed to use, including the photoacoustic instrument that we've been using in the imaging core. And with that, thank you. Good. Megan, thank you for that uh, really remarkable presentation. May I call upon the board for comments or questions? Well, I'm a 
Yes, I'd like to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Scott. Um, I was just whispering to um, Trustee Vassar. I had a very close friend who was in law enforcement in Muskegon um, who passed away um, several years ago from geo got to pronounce Glio, it. Glioblastoma. Glioblastoma, thank you. Um, the work that you're doing is incredible. I get very excited when I hear these types of things happening, especially here at MSU. Um, I recall when I first became a trustee, I don't even think we really, we were just starting the bio um, engineering type of work here at the university and how excited I was at that time and to see students such as you doing such innovative work is absolutely exciting to me. Um, go green. I am so excited for this because to be able to develop something and it happens here at MSU that would be absolutely remarkable. So congratulations on the great work you and your team are doing. Continue to just excel. I'm excited for the the work you're doing and what you're going to do in the future. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much. And that's really my question. Congratulations on being ABD. Thank you. Just make sure you finish. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, we know. So when you're done, what are you going to do? Stay here. <laughs> What's next? I'm hoping to join the pharmaceutical industry in hopes of applying this technology, hopefully into translation into the clinic which will be exciting. Um, so the, the one um, huge commendation I have for you is that you are speaking in a language that most of us do not understand, but you made it so understandable, which actually speaks to your understanding of it. Mm -hmm. Because if you can teach it to you know, someone who's an English major, you're doing a great <laughs> job. You actually know this stuff. And so t kudos to um, Dr. Kim and to the rest of your, your faculty who really have given you a, a, found, I mean, a, a sound foundation that you're able to speak to us and we can understand what you're talking about means that you know this. Thank you. And you got it. Yes. Very good. Well, Megan, thank you very much again for this wonderful presentation. Thank, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you.